Yuji Itadori is a walking L. Now hear me out, hear me out. I know you're hovering over that dislike button already, but I want to explain why I believe this and why what I'm about to say makes Yuji Itadori possibly one of the best JJK characters. Also, you see this little Itadori? He's going to be placed around the video, and if you manage to find all of them, please comment all the times he shows up, and I will reply to you with a cookie. Anyway, back to the video. I want to take you back, back to 2020. I know it wasn't the greatest year with the world being on fire and all with a certain virus, but one thing we did get this year was the release of the Jujutsu Kaisen anime and man did this anime explode in popularity possibly for a certain character but we're not here to talk about him at least not yet we're here to talk about the main character of this anime yuta okotsu <coughs> i mean yuji itadori now this video contains spoilers for season one and two of the jujutsu kaisen anime so please if you haven't watched all the episodes then proceed with caution when we're first introduced to itadori he is shown to possess some incredible strength and speed at least when compared to regular humans we're also shown that his parents aren't in the picture and the only family member that still cares and loves for him is his grandpa someone who he quickly loses in episode one itadori's first l of the season despite this itadori is always shown to be someone who is happy and joyful and decides to live by the final words his grandpa left him Add this on top of Itadori's beliefs later on in the first episode that everyone should have a proper and just death without the interference of cursed spirits and you have your main character's personality and motives wrapped up nicely. You know the rest though. Itadori eats the first Sukuna finger and becomes the vessel for the king of curses. He is told that he will be executed until Gojo steps in and prevents it from happening straight away seeing potential in Itadori. Itadori's second L wouldn't come till episode 5 when he dies. Wait, what? Did they actually just kill off the main character? Turns out this was a fake out and Tsukuna makes a bounding vow with Itadori and in return, Itadori is returned back to the land of the living. So before anyone argues that technically this isn't an L if Itadori lived, I'd like to stop you right there because although Itadori didn't actually die, it's the mental toll it took on him after the episode's events, making Itadori question his own strength and coming to the realization that his beliefs are all well and good with wanting to save as many people as possible, but none of it matters if he lacks the power to do so. And and so Gojo sets Itadori up with an intense body breaking training regimen. Watching movies? Okay, I'm not going to lie, that's not what I was expecting, and I love it. Most anime shonen series have training arcs being intense and pushing characters to their absolute limits. And here we have Itadori just casually watching movies to learn how to control his cursed energy. However, the entertaining training regimen would come to a close as Itadori would be sent out with Nanami on a mission. This is where we're introduced to Itadori's main antagonist of the show, Mahito. A curse that would become a stain on Itadori's existence and become the curse that forces Itadori to go through most of his losses. Once Nanami and Itadori finishes up investigating a crime scene, they end up fighting off against some cursed humans, a gift that Mahito left for the sorcerers to deal with. And this is where we see Itadori start to shine, as we start to see just how much more powerful he has gotten with controlling his cursed energy. They deal with the cursed humans and begin investigating suspects, one of those being Junpei, a human who who was present at the movie theatre when Mahito attacked. We also see Junpei going after Mahito for an explanation and they end up talking and Mahito manipulates and uses Junpei to get closer to the sorcerers. Junpei wouldn't have to wait long as he comes in contact with Itadori himself but despite Mahito giving Junpei a warning about sorcerers, Junpei and Itadori become close friends sharing their love for movies. They hang out, watch some movies and Itadori is even introduced to Junpei's mother. The same night when Itadori left however, Junpei's mother is killed by a curse who was attracted to one of the Sukuna fingers as someone had planted it there. Mahito once again manipulates Junpei and makes Junpei believe it was one of his high school bullies and Mahito gives Junpei the power to confront his bully. Unfortunately for Junpei, Itadori arrives at the school to stop Junpei from killing anyone. We then have an intense standoff between Junpei and Itadori, two students on either side of the Jujutsu world and one being manipulated by a cursed spirit. With this in mind, Itadori is forced to stop Junpei but then Mahito appears and reveals that the entire time he had been playing Junpei, treating him like a pawn to further his own goals. And with everything out of the bag, he transfigures Junpei's soul and forces him to fight Itadori, before eventually dying at Itadori's feet. This would be another L for Itadori as he fails to save Junpei and has to reflect on his own lack of strength. Not to mention that Sukuna and Mahito take this time to mock Itadori and laugh at his loss. Enraged, Itadori fights off against Mahito, swearing to kill Mahito 
though, no matter what. Mahito would attempt to use his technique on Itadori, but would only annoy Sukuna, the King of Curses, for trying to transfigure his soul. Nanami shows up shortly after, and they absolutely jump Mahito, with the promise to exercise him. Unfortunately, Mahito manages to escape, and Itadori is forced to grieve the loss of Junpei, whilst also realising that he wasn't able to stop Mahito. This would be the last time Itadori would come in contact with Mahito until Season 2, and so we're going to be speedrunning the rest of Season 1, as Itadori doesn't really go through much after this. He reveals to his classmates that he's still in fact alive, faces off against Todo briefly, who teaches him to optimise his cursed output and perform a black flash, and then demolishes Chozo's brothers, which then brings us to the Shibuya arc. Now the Shibuya incident is probably where Itadori really takes the most losses. It starts off with him being teamed up with Mei Mei as they are at the same train station Mahito is at, meaning Itadori would have a chance to get back at Mahito. Unfortunately for Itadori however, he wouldn't be able to descend the train station fast enough to catch Mahito and these events would eventually lead to the train of transfigured humans to arrive at Shibuya, causing Gojo to hesitate and eventually be forced into activating his domain expansion which would then lead to him being sealed in the prison realm. Although I wouldn't count this as another L, I do believe that Itadori probably feels somewhat responsible. I mean, if those transfigured humans never arrived at Shibuya Station, Gojo may never have been sealed, and I'm sure Itadori somewhat knows this. Itadori would understand the situation of Gojo being sealed, thanks to Mekamaru, and would rush off to Shibuya to warn everyone that Gojo was sealed, this setting in motion the plan to unseal Gojo. Itadori would eventually reach Shibuya Station and once again begin descending the station running into Chozo. Now, Chozo would recognize Itadori immediately, knowing that his brothers were slain by Itadori and Nobara. And so Itadori and Chozo would begin brawling, and oh my god, this scene was absolutely beautifully animated. It may be one of the best animated fight scenes I've ever seen from any anime, and the way it was handled is just absolute cinema. Chozo and Itadori would go back and forth, exchanging blow after blow, until eventually Itadori loses. Once again, he was outmatched and would have been dead if it wasn't for Sukuna keeping him alive. Jogo would eventually find Itadori, and knowing he was the vessel for Sukuna, he would begin feeding Itadori more of Sukuna's fingers to strengthen Sukuna. This would eventually backfire on Jogo, as he would then face off against Sukuna and would inevitably lose as Sukuna had become just too powerful. Eventually, to the Binding Vow, Sukuna would have to give Itadori back control, but knowing how many lives were taken by the fight between Sukuna and Jogo, Itadori would absolutely break down, as once again, he's faced with reality that he's weak compared to most sorcerers, and all he wants to do at this point is just curl up and die, so he wouldn't have to be the vessel for Sukuna any longer. Some time would pass and Itadori would begin to rise and get back into the fight in order to support other sorcerers, and also because Gojo is still sealed, he knows if he doesn't help, then others could die. Not mere moments later, we cut to Nanami, who was badly injured by Jogo prior to the Sukuna versus Jogo fight. And for all people to come across, Nanami came across Mahito. One of the worst outcomes in this situation. Mahito would toy with Nanami first, having transfigured humans attack him. Nanami would succeed in taking them all down. But unfortunately for Nanami, Mahito would arrive to deal the finishing blow. And worse than that, just as Nanami is about to die, Itadori arrives and he's forced to watch Mahito kill Nanami, not mere moments after his breakdown from the damage Sukuna had caused. Once again, Itadori becomes enraged and attacks Mahito, going blow for blow and punch for punch. They would seem somewhat equal in strength throughout their fight. Mahito would occasionally ridicule Itadori with the death of Junpei and transform other humans right in front of Itadori, even claiming they're the same. This exchange would go back and forth until eventually Nobara would get involved fighting a clone of Mahito. Nobara would catch on to this and would use her curse technique on the clone to affect the original Mahito, but then Mahito would catch onto this plan and would run away, both the original and the clone heading for one another. Nobara would chase the clone and Itadori would chase the original, eventually all meeting up. Now the Mahito clone couldn't actually use his technique on other people, so knowing this he would have to run away from Nobara and meet up with his original. It looked like they were going to merge, but in fact the original would go after Nobara and use his technique to kill Nobara right in front of Itadori. This means in the space of minutes, Itadori had witnessed the destruction 
Destruction Sukuna cost? See Nanami die and Nobara. If this doesn't show that Itadori has lost so much in the time that he's been a part of the Jujutsu world, I don't know what does. And to rub salt in the wound, Mahito would learn Itadori's technique, Black Flash. At this point, Mahito had completely broke Itadori. His conviction, his motives, his smile, everything Itadori stood for, Mahito burned. But this wouldn't be a shonen series if the main character never got back up and gave up. So with some encouragement from his brother, Toto, Itadori finds a new resolve and he goes blow for blow with Mahito once again. The fight was intense and seemed equal until eventually, Todo would make the ultimate sacrifice and lose his curse technique to give Itadori one last chance at taking Mahito down. And here is where we see Itadori's last L of the season. He takes on Mahito, overpowers him, but in doing so, admits to Mahito that he was right. They are the same. And Itadori says to Mahito, for Itadori to come to terms with everything in this moment was so powerful. The line, I'm you, captures Itadori's new motives so well. He's come to terms with the burden of being a Jujutsu sorcerer. No longer is the main character a naive kid who wants to save everyone. Itadori knows full well that sometimes he can't save everyone, but what he can do is deal with the curses himself. And so that's why Itadori is one of the best JJK characters. He arguably has been through the most trauma and despite this has always found a reason to get back up and rise from his losses. But the sad truth is that after the Shibuya arc, he's never going to be the same again. The once naive, happy-go-lucky kid is now forced to face reality and how harsh life can be. Um, thank you for watching this video if you've made it this far. This is new content for me, delving into a character and doing a character-like analysis, but I really enjoyed making this video. I love binging movies and TV shows and really trying to understand the characters we see on screen. And if I don't see you again, internet stranger, then best of luck with everything. But if you do plan on watching more of my content, then I guess I will see you in whatever video I decide to make next.